Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. This is Jason, Certified Financial Planner, host of Fighting Words Financial. Let's talk about my initial reaction to Battery Day. Um, guys, look, this video is gonna be incomplete and it's gonna be incomplete for a long time because there was so much information released about Tesla's new batteries that it's difficult for me to parse. And it was, in every way that I expected, absolutely mind-blowing. Now. Pay no attention to what's going on in the stock market right now. Uh, most people, I mean, honestly, I bet people with PhDs in physics are having a hard time understanding all of the implications uh, that are going on right now with all the changes to battery manufacture, and very few analysts actually understand what's going on as well, and it's going to take everyone a long time to figure out everything that Elon and his chief engineer, I, I forget that guy's name, actually presented. Elon pretty much did his version of selling, which is he gives you the data and then it's up to you to be smart enough to interpret and understand it. You know, there was a lot of hype leading up to battery day. Uh, that really wasn't him. That was all us, right? That was all us prognosticating and trying to predict the future. In the presentation, it was really just about facts and it's up to you to interpret those facts. So let me give you my opinion right now on battery day and by the end of this video I think you guys are gonna know a lot more about why I'm so excited why I think that uh, you know that Tesla really is a future trillion dollar company now and uh, and why my analysis is really going to be incomplete and we're still going to be talking about this months even years from now okay so Tesla not only met my expectations for this battery day event they exceeded them in almost every way and really surprised me in ways that are going to take me weeks and weeks and weeks to research and digest. But let me bottom line it for you. The thing that's really most important here is that there's probably going to be a 56% reduction in dollars per kilowatt hour um, when it comes to you know, the, the cost of the batteries at the pack level. So it's going to lower the cost to somewhere between $57 per kilowatt hour or $48 per kilowatt hour depending on which estimate for, that you believe for Tesla's current cost per kilowatt hour. This wasn't done with any huge breakthrough in, uh, in battery chemistry. Uh, it was really done with a bunch of small um, improvements to battery chemistry, to manufacturing processes, to uh, you know, uh, cathode and anode materials, to cell vehicle integration, and all that stuff. So let's talk about that now, let's, let's break that down. So let's talk about cell design real fast. And I'm not gonna to spend too much time on that because I did another video where we discussed a lot about cell design. They introduced the new cell, which was part of the Roadrunner project. Pretty much all the leaks that we knew about that were, were, were pretty much true. It's roughly gonna have five and a half times the energy density, I'm sorry, five and a half times the capacity that the old batteries did. Some of the heat issues have been dealt with. What I really didn't understand though about the tablet's design was that how much it was going to speed up production. I thought the primary benefit in, uh, in, in the cell design would be taking some of the heat out of the equation there. Uh, I didn't realize that taking the tabs out makes it so you don't have to start and stop, start and stop, you know, during the production process, okay? So really, if we move on from cell design to cell manufacturer, that's one of the huge benefits too, is that tabless design. Also, one of the things that they realized while they're looking at cell manufacture, they, they start from the ground up, say how, how are cells made from the mining process all the way to the finished product. And they looked and they said, they, you know, they, they realized after looking that most of this is just being done the way it is now because that's the way it was done in the past, right? That these processes evolved. There wasn't a lot of, um, a lot of thought put into it after they got something that initially worked. And so they redesigned the cell manufacturing process from the ground up. And I'll get a little bit more into that later. Um, and then they got into anode materials, which I'm not gonna get too technically into that right now. Uh, and then the cathode materials, which I'm gonna delve a little bit more into that cathode material stuff in just a minute here, because that's really important when it comes to the million mile battery. And uh, I'll talk to you guys about that, all right? And lastly, cell vehicle integration, which I'm not gonna spend too much time on just because I still have yet to digest that. That's something that, that I really don't understand what all the implications are right now. So I'm gonna be taking a look at that. So these last three points, the anode materials, cathode materials, and cell integration, those are the things that I'm gonna be spending a little bit more time uh, understanding for the next couple of weeks. But let's talk about that million mile battery. That was actually in there it just really wasn't well covered. So neither one of these guys is the true showman like 
Steve Jobs was for Apple, right? If you weren't paying attention, you might have missed a slide that was titled The Diversified Cathode Approach. And uh, if you look at it, the million mile battery was kind of hidden in the details there. And I think that they just didn't get around to discussing it, but it's definitely there. It's implied uh, under the iron based long cycle life tab that was on there, right? So uh, lithium ion phosphate batteries can live up to 4,000 cycles at an 80 percent depth of discharge. So these, uh, they, you know, the, the benefit of these lithium iron phosphate batteries, which they talked a little bit about, uh, was had to do with material sourcing. They don't contain either nickel or cobalt. Uh, both of these uh, elements are supply constrained. Uh, they're geopolitically complex and, uh, and expensive to obtain. And there's all kinds of ethical issues also with cobalt because of where they come from and how those miners are created. So Check this out, a lithium ion phosphate battery with a slightly lower range than, uh, than the batteries that are currently sold right now, about 280 miles, at 4,000 cycles. So 280 mile range at 4,000 cycles, that equals to 1.12 million miles. If you are also paying attention to all news Tesla, way back on June 11th, Tesla got approval from the Chinese government to use this new cathode chemistry in the Chinese made Model 3 fleet. Now, I don't know if it's currently being used or currently uh, you know, under production, but it looks like that is the direction they're going if they got approved to use this. And there's your million uh, mile battery. I wish they would have covered a little bit more about this. Let's move on and talk a little bit about vertical integration. Um, Vertical integration is a word that is thrown around a lot. It was really thrown around by Trevor Milton when he talked about owning all of their technology and owning the processes and all that. All that turned out not to be true. Um, that's never really been the case with Tesla. They've always contracted out uh, a bunch of their services and a bunch of the things that they need, like especially cell production, to, to, to get what they need to expand. So their primary constraint with expansion right now is cell production. They're bringing some of that in-house. Uh, they, they've stated up front that they're going to continue to buy cells from LG. They're going to continue to buy cells from Panasonic. But they are heading towards uh, you know, owning the entire process from beginning to end is what allowed them to redesign the cell production process from mining to you know production of, of the cells to uh, you know to recycling later on down the road. This is what is you know, allowing them to have that 69% or what they claim is going to be a 69% uh, reduction in the capital uh, needed to create these new factories and create this new type of production. So uh, that is one of the, the words that are thrown around a bunch. Uh, vertical integration is really poorly understood. Everyone thinks it just means owning everything and having it in-house. What it also means though is that it is now possible to redesign these entire legacy processes that have things that exist in them simply because that is the way you did them before. Now it allows you to go ahead and redesign that process. So this is really truly revolutionary. Um, I think what's going on right now is like I said before, Elon Musk just presented you to the data and it's up to you guys to be smart enough to understand the implications. I think a lot of people aren't smart enough to understand these implications. He sent out a warning to the rest of the vehicle industry essentially saying that in three years, your internal combustion engine is going to be obsolete. Price parity is here. Uh, it's going to be, it's already here in terms of the tech, all the technological hurdles have been leapt. And the only thing left to do at this point is scale. And when it comes to certain parts of, their, of scaling their operations, Elon and his engineer said they're already on fourth and fifth generation machines that make the machines. So this is not something that is a secret project that no one's gonna see the light of day. They're already in pilot production facilities. They're already making these cells. They're already sourcing things the way they want to. They're building these new factories in the way that they said they're going to do. Uh, production starts in 18 months. It should be ramped up sometime in the next three years. If other companies don't start using this technology, they're going to be in trouble. One of the most impressive things about, about uh, you know, this whole presentation was when Elon Musk said, we're not keeping this a secret. We shared all of our patent technology. We shared all of our manufacturing processes and people just don't believe us. I think that they're not going to believe you for some time. I think that no one's going to, people aren't going to believe Tesla for some time. But as they continue to deliver on their promises, albeit sometimes late, they, that, that, that does happen. But Tesla is a company that delivers on its promises. You know, even if they are late, as they start proving that this process really works, other companies are gonna have to uh, adapt it. 
they're going to have to adopt this sort of bottom-up approach to cell manufacture, or they're not going to be able to compete with any with Tesla or anyone else in the EV world that does adopt this. And I'll tell you why. Right now, Tesla and, and all these other EV manufacturers, they're buying up the entire world supply of cells that's being produced. GM, with their new Ultium technology, I know they claim it's just as good as Tesla's battery, but let's not kid ourselves, it really isn't. It's actually sourced from LG. Tesla buys from LG, dozens of other EV companies buy from, uh, from LG or CATL or Panasonic. They're all sourcing from the same manufacturers, but Tesla is the only company that's doing something to address the primary constraint on expansion of the EV you know, fleet and the EV industry. They're the only ones saying, we're gonna build an entire new uh, line of production, we're going to change the way cells are produced and we're gonna reduce the cost. I think it's wonderful that they're not actually you know, keeping this technology or these manufacturing processes to themselves and they're willing to share this with the world. It really uh, shows that Elon's uh, goal, his overall goal really isn't you know, so cynical as making billions of dollars from selling EV vehicles. He really does want to end the way we uh, drive our energy now and drive us towards a sustainable energy future. Anyway guys, these are just some of my quick thoughts right now on my reaction to battery day. There's going to be lots of other people out there with videos that are more technical. Um, I, I wish I could have gotten into some of the technical details, but to be honest with you, I don't really understand everything that was put out there uh, yesterday and I really need to research more, but I'm very, very excited. Battery day met every single one of my expectations and exceeded every single one of my expectations. It seems pretty clear to me now that um, you know my prediction that one day Tesla would be the largest component of the Dow 30 and it would be the largest component of the S&P 500. I honestly believe that, that that's true. It's probably one day going to be a trillion dollar company um, and I, I think that that future is not that far off. Thank you very much for your time, guys. Remember, this is just my opinion. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell or hold any securities. Do your own research, come to your own conclusions. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.